Hello everyone and welcome to Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. In the news, Sulphur Springs police officer Buddy Williams and his canine partner Kilo recently earned the Top Dog Award based on the police canine's overall performance during the U.S. Police Canine Association Region 20 trials and certifications held recently at Coleman Park in Sulphur Springs. Williams and Kilo took first place honors in the patrol contest and initially tied with Donnie Tarter and K-9 Deeks of the McKinney Police Department for first place in narcotics. However, Deeks' time was better than Kilo's, so top honors in that category went to the McKinney PD team with the uh, SSPD pair in second. However, because uh, Kilo's overall points total was the highest, the SSPD team went home with the Top Dog Award. Kilo, by the way, is half Malinois and half Shepherd. Another local canine handler pair also was recognized for their skills. Hopkins County Sheriff's Deputy Zach Poindexter and canine Shiv were named uh, Rookie Dog of the Year. A traffic stop early Wednesday morning by Hopkins County Sheriff Sergeant Scott Davis resulted in discovery of methamphetamine and another substance. Search of the car at 2.23 a.m. Wednesday on College Street at Oak Avenue also resulted in a location of a capsule and pill the deputy believed to be ecstasy in a uh, female passenger's purse. Sergeant Davis also re reported seeing a small bag of suspected marijuana. In his arrest report, the deputy said the woman tried to not allow consent to search her purse. When asked about the pills, she reportedly affirmed that they were ecstasy. The car driver, a man, reportedly admitted having an open container of alcohol in the vehicle. Search of the car resulted in discovery of a crystal-like rock of methamphetamine. Both driver and passenger were taken to jail. 32-year-old Kaderan Dion Franklin of Sulphur Springs was charged with possession of less than one gram of a controlled substance, and his bond was set at $5,000. 27-year-old Lydia Elizabeth Amonte Neri of Sulphur Springs was charged with possession of one gram or more but less than four grams of a controlled substance, and her bond was set at $10,000. The Hopkins County Sheriff's Department is putting on their ninth annual Easter egg hunt this Saturday, April 13th, on the grounds of the Civic Center. It is scheduled from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., but watching the forecast and watching the skies is Sheriff's Department Deputy Alvin Jordan. He's going to tell us about the egg hunt plans. We've been doing it for nine years now, or this will be our ninth year. And we, like I said earlier, we was talking about the rain coming in. We hope that's going to dodge us. Yeah. We had one time that came in, we had the old jail, and it came a pretty good flood, and then it skies opened up, and it turned off pretty, and we still was able to have it. So we're hoping that's going to happen this time. Okay. Well, as always, in the springtime in Texas, things are kind of touch and go with weather. So if there are changes that come in between now and Saturday, we'll be able to announce them to you here because we have good connection with the Sheriff's Department. But let's talk about the plan. This beautiful poster that's been out for the Easter egg hunt that is just thrilling to kids and families. Hopkins County Sheriff Lewis Tatum's ninth annual Easter egg hunt, Saturday, April 13th on the grounds of the Civic Center. Yes, ma'am. It'd be where they used to have the uh, stew cook off and all that out on the grounds and we we've got it set up where pavilion we put all the prizes up there on it and uh, when each it's going to be five different age groups zero to two three and four five and six seven eight nine and ten there's five groups and we tried to fix up at least a thousand eggs per uh uh, time that we put the eggs out. We do them individual. That way it gives the little ones time to pick up their eggs and then go on all the way up to that. So with the five age groups, 5,000 eggs? Yes. Man, oh Takes a while to stuff them. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's uh, it turns out pretty good. And like I said, what we do is we have the tickets that's on a roll that you give one to the 
to the whatever age group the child is, the other one to go in a box. And then when we get ready to give away those prizes, we'll have the hopper there and put those tickets in, draw to all the prizes gone, then we'll go to the next age group. Each age group will have their own color ticket. And we'll, before we start drawing, we'll tell everybody what age group it is, what color ticket, so they can pull them out and get ready for the prize or whatever. Well, it's a lot of people to manage because crowds and crowds of people have come to this Easter egg hunt. Yes, ma'am. We estimated before in the past we've had close to probably 2,000 people show up. So uh, we try to have a pretty good Easter egg hunt. And we have in the past had uh, Soul Springs Dodge donated me bicycles. Jeff Shelton, he was always good about every year giving me more and more bikes. His When he first started, he said, each year I'm going to give you more bicycles. And I think it was close to 50 last year. 52 something like that thought was going to have that this year but then i went down and found out they sold out so since they sold out then uh, the new owner can't buy any and the old owner can't can't buy any so we're not going to have those but we're i do I have raised quite a bit of money and we're going to pay for everything food wise and entertainment and as soon as we get that then we'll go from there and buy prizes and see so we still are to have some pretty good ones well, would, would you be looking for any donors? Yeah, if anybody wants to donate, uh, feel free to call the sheriff's office. We can come by and pick them up or whatever they want to give. And anything helps out a lot. And since we don't have those bicycles, we're not going to have near as many of them to give out this year. But we're still hoping we're going to have pretty good prizes to give out to different ones. And it's still good old-fashioned fun. Everybody gets together. Families bring the kids. The kids, they each get their own time in, in their age group. So I think that's what they're not competing with the bigger kids to find the eggs. Yeah, and that's why we divided it up. Uh, that way it gives each one of the uh, kids individual time because you get you put the bigger kids with the smaller kids they want to take the eggs away you know different things pick them up for the little ones can this way each age group that gives them time parent take them out walk them around let them pick up eggs have a good time with it and then get on up to the bigger kids and, the, and that seemed to work out pretty good uh we're doing a little bit different this morning. I, I went last night to the sheriff's posse meeting, talked to them. We're going to try to put on a barricade down to the creek where they can only come in on the south end to, to hunt for eggs uh, and come in that way. And then we're going to try to stress as much as we can that the parents don't get involved in picking up the eggs. Now, for the smaller one, they're going to have to go out with the child, but let them, you know, if they can, pick them up on their own and fill their basket up. A thousand eggs would already give quite a bit of each child quite a bit of eggs you know would have and like i told them if they don't get a, uh, a nice prize or whatever then they'll end up getting a good sugar high to go home with mom and dad at night so <laughs> well what about well before we go to the next topic there's a lot of people who help out you've got the posse you've got different members of the sheriff's department they love this event they love to help oh yeah and we've got even this year i've talked to danny davis treasurer he's going to have his church come and there he said that i believe his youth group is going to show up and they're going to try to uh, have some shirts on to identify them with and then that way if they need help they'll be there to help out and that they're going to supply three bounce houses so we'll have uh, bounce houses set up per age where the smaller children are not in there with the bigger ones because we did that one year and we had a lot of the smaller ones coming out crying because they get in there flipping them over and different things so so we're going to try to bust them up a little bit on that so well i know there's also food involved yes uh we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs and then ocean spray they have given me a bunch of their juices that they have uh, we're going to have those. We're also going to have water that was donated by Fix and Feed. we got water that's donated by Atwoods. So we have plenty of stuff drank. And also got Chicken Express. They're going to give us like, I believe it's five uh, big coolers of tea. And we're going to have that available. So there'll be plenty enough there to drink. We're going to have chips. We'll have the hamburgers, hot dogs. And we'll have, uh, uh, we're going to have cakes there for cakewalk. So anybody can play in the cakewalk, whether you're uh, two years old or one year old, whatever, all the way up to, to whatever, you know, can participate in it. So. The cakewalk is so much fun. Oh, yeah. Well, um, and there's also music. Music and fun entertainment. There's going to be music. I'm going to have some clowns there. 
that's going to uh, be doing balloon figures and for the kids. We're going to have a train that Oscar Aguilar, Aguilar has. He's going to let us have that to pull the kids around in it. Um, we're going to have cotton candy. We'll have uh, snow cone, popcorn. So there's plenty enough other than just hamburger and hot dogs. They, there'll be plenty enough stuff there, you know, to have go around to everyone. So. Well, we are being a little bit... Uh, oh, and you have a DJ with music. Yes, and that's uh, Dale Cummings, uh, known as a C. He usually comes out. He's been with us ever since, every year we've had this event. Well, this year he, he called me and said that he wouldn't be there, but his son Danny would, okay. and Danny will be there, and he'll be DJing and talking and different things, too, and, and Danny does a good job. He, he done it last year for us. He does. And uh, I meant to I also, I got with EMS. They're going to be there with their ambulance. They got with the helicopters. They're going to try to have it land where people can see it. Uh, uh, their life flight or whatever they call it now. Anyway, they'll be able to see the inside of that, how that operates and talk to the pilots and stuff. We're going to have the PD there. They'll be doing fingerprinting and all that for the child database where a child gets lost or what. They have all that on file. That'll be available. Uh, and we have the fire department. I've talked to Andy Inslee, and he's going to come out and bring his fire trucks, and that way the kids, they really like looking at that. So. Well... What, I know that we have to be a little bit, you know, conscious of, of how the weather will direct us on Saturday. Too bad that the forecast doesn't look too great. But as we know, things can quickly change as far as weather, and sometimes the skies open up and we just have sunshine oh, yeah. and bright skies. Well, we've had that, like I said, I can't remember what year it was, but it was behind the old jail when we had it. And uh, I remember we had where we had to have people going to pavilion different things and after it quit raining it opened up and it turned off beautiful and we still kids got out there and of course too besides getting egg they got a little muddy and they had a lot more fun doing that than they did you know so <laughs> it turned out pretty good uh, ideally it's supposed to be from 10 30 to 1 on the grounds of the civic center yeah it's, we put on there 10 to 1 and that way it gives people to get time to get there to where they can get their ticket for it, whatever age group their child is in, uh, get everything ready for that. And then we try to start serving lunch around 10.30 and, uh, and then the Easter egg hunt too, all that going on at the same time. Uh, we're going to try to have all that going so we, we hope everything comes out good. Now you said get a ticket for your child's age group. Is there any cost to this? No, it's all free to the public. Everybody comes out, has a good time. It don't cost anyone anything. Everything's been donated by different merchants around town, and it's helped us out a lot. And like I said, we're going to have plenty of hamburgers, hot dogs, and plenty of stuff to drink, so it'll be a good time. Well, it's a tradition in Hopkins County, started by former Sheriff Butch Adams. Yes. And uh, Henry Turner was organizing it at first. Yes. And you came along and uh, got back on board with the Hopkins County Sheriff's Department as a deputy about that time. Yeah, Henry came to me and asked me if I would help him, and I told him I would. And, of course, whenever Henry left, then I took it over. And we, we started out in the old jail. We probably had 75, maybe 100 people showed up. And it's raised all the way down to close to 2,000. So it's it's become a pretty good size event. Okay. Well, I'm sure looking forward to it. It's Saturday, Hopkins County Sheriff Lewis Tatum's ninth annual Easter egg hunt. Now bring your own basket. That's just about the only rule. Yes. Now we will have brochures to be there. I think handing out some of their basket, but it's going to be a limited amount. So you might want to go ahead and bring some sacks or whatever you need for the children, but uh, Brookshire's usually has quite a few that they give away, and they will have some prizes other than the prizes for, uh, to, I think they give out some type of ticket, and we'll have those on our names they fill out or something, and then they'll have drawings for giving away Easter baskets that's full of candy and different things in them, so. Well, it's sure exciting for the kids, and we're going to say once again that um, Weather will be monitored as, as we go along, but the plan is for Saturday, this Saturday, April 13th, outdoors at the Civic Center, starting at around 10.30. Yeah, I tried to get everyone that wanted to come bring an umbrella, and then they can hold them over the kids while they hunt their <laughs> eggs. So we hope they don't come down to it, but uh, if it does, then we'll, we'll go from there and see what the good Lord's got in the door for us. That's true. Now, it started out saying showers, and that's, it's, it's, we'll watch it as the forecast modifies itself. Also, 
Um, remember, this is a free event for Hopkins County people, and bring the kids and the family. Oh, yeah, I'll be hoping to have a good time. We've always had a good time in the past, and we hope it's going to be that way this time. In sports, the Wildcats baseball team lost an improbable game to Greenville Tuesday night on the road. The Wildcats led 9-5 going into the bottom of the seventh. Greenville tied it up in the seventh inning and then won it with a run in the bottom of the eighth. The Wildcats are now in sixth place in district with a 2-8 and eight record. Wildcats baseball coach Jared Hammock. Finally got our bats going and... Uh... You know, I think we had double-digit hits. We scored nine runs. We're up nine to five going into the bottom of the seventh. We just need to get three outs, you know, before they can get four runs to tie us. And, you know, we just yet again found a way to, to you know, get a loss, uh, basically. I think we had three errors in that inning alone. Um, you know, I, I, a little more stringent on errors than, than maybe others. I actually had us down for about six. I don't think the board had us, but maybe for four. But uh, I think we had six total errors, three in that inning. Um, you know, I know people are going to say the, the field umpire was not good, and he wasn't. He missed some. But in spite of his misses, if we just make the plays we're supposed to in the seventh, you know, we come out of there with a much needed – uh, victory, but we just, uh, as we've done much of the district season, we're just not playing very good defense. And then uh, you look in the eighth inning, you know, man at third for you, and just can't get that big hit. Greenville comes up in the very same situation, and they deliver. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, you know, we started off the their half of the eighth with two walks, which is, uh, you know, sometimes and was the kiss of death for us. Uh, you know, we just, you know, we're, we're battling. I mean, again, the effort's there. The, the want to is there. But the bottom line is we're just not getting it done. And it's, it's a variety of people. It's not like you could you point your finger at one person. Not that you want to do that anyway. But it's just, it's just a, across the board uh, that we're just not getting, you know, done, whether it be in the infield or the outfield or the pitcher or the catcher. I mean, it's just different different areas and uh, you know it's disappointing because over the years uh, we've prided ourselves on on pitching and defense and not that we don't work on hitting we work on it as much as anything but if you play good defense and you pitch well you're going to be in most games and you'll give yourself a chance to win but right now we're just uh, we're not there uh, our, our defense is uh, is just not getting it done. Like I said, we're making way too many errors. We're giving the other team way too many opportunities, more outs than, than they should be getting. And, you know, and, and you give them credit. They're taking advantage of those opportunities better than, than maybe we are when, when we get them. Let's talk positive. Uh, Austin Dodd, incredible ball game, five for five, almost hits for the cycle. And uh, just, you know, with just the terror at the bat in his hand last night. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, you were there. You saw we we tried a, a different lineup. Um, you know, he had been the leadoff hitter much of the last two years, and we just decided to kind of to look at. I looked at our district stats, particularly the on base percentage, and just kind of worked the lineup a little bit to that end. And so he ended up being in the five hole. Uh, and like you said, I mean, you don't see that often. Five for five. Um, hit the ball really well, hit the ball like we had, you know, expected him to mo most of the season. And he kind of, he, he did hit the ball really well prior to the district starts. Kind of struggled a little bit in district, but showed what he's capable of certainly last night and just had a huge uh, game at the plate. You know, Jackson swung the bat uh, consistently well as he has all year. Uh, I think he had three hits, maybe at least two doubles. I mean, he's just driving the the ball and and you know at different times we had different people bring in guys uh, you know from third or from second we had a couple of big two out hits which we haven't had a whole lot of as you know still though the, the one that really bothers me is the one out batter when we have the one out and a man at third that's really when you got to have somebody even just put it in play. They weren't really bringing the infield in all that much. They, you know, just the infield's back. Just, and I know it's harder than it than it is easy to say, but you know, just a ground ball to second base scores a run. You know, from third every time, 
Uh, but we just we, – we struggle with that. Uh, but, again, I, like I told them last night, from an offensive standpoint, we played winning baseball. You score nine runs, you expect to win. Uh, but, again, maybe the more important aspect, the pitching and the defense, uh, was not uh, a winning uh, effort. And so I, I guess it was just, uh, you know, kind of outweighed the, the good offensive night. So, it, again, it, it was just a true disappointment yeah. uh, in a disappointing district season. Now you just have to go get them on Friday. And you, you said four out of six, you could still say four out of five. Four out of five is, uh, you know, that means you got to, of course, at very least split with T-High, which, I mean, I we can sweep them. I mean, if we just play yeah. like we did the first nine ball games of the year. Or, uh, but, yeah, and then we got help last night. We're, we're getting help where we need it. We're just not helping ourselves, you know. Uh, I think T-High beat Mount Pleasant. Uh, Lindell beat Roy City. So they're keeping them within reach. Uh, but – we're just not doing our part. And we really need the Friday game, of course, because that will give us the series with Greenville. Mm -hmm. And so any tiebreaker, we, we will win. But the, the bigger issue is the Roy City potential tie. We have to ultimately get ahead of them, uh, basically two games out of the last five. So, uh, because they'll win the tiebreaker, of course. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, we just we just have to to do what we can can do to control our destiny, uh, and that's just to take each game one at a time and and try to win. Uh, you know, like you said, maybe at least four out of the five, five all would be just super, yeah. uh, and just just hope people will will you know kind of help us. We need Lindell to beat Roy City again, and. Uh, possibly, you know, it'll come down to that last week, hopefully, us and T-High and then Mount Pleasant and Roy City. I don't know how that needs to go yet. We'll just have to wait and see how the, the three games prior to that go to who we might need to, to root for. But I think we're going to have to have some help, but we also have to help ourselves. The Wildcats will play the final game of their district series with Greenville Friday night at 7 at Wildcat Park. The Lady Cats softball team is now in sole possession of first place in the district after games Tuesday night. The Lady Cats defeated Greenville while Mount Pleasant was losing to Texas High. The Lady Cats won in Greenville 11-3 with solid hitting and pitching. Lady Cats softball coach David Carrillo. We played so much better than we did the first time over that spring break uh, thing with Gilmer. I mean, with Greenville. Uh, you know, she's really a good pitcher, has really good spin on the ball, and uh, she's always giving us trouble. I'm, I'm, I told her last night, actually, when she walked out the field, I'm glad you graduated because uh, she is a really good player. But uh, we were able to hit the ball really well. And, uh, you know, some of the things that we've been focusing on in practice is being able to hit the ball opposite field. And uh, our girls, I can't tell you how many balls they hit over to the right field side and taking the pitch where, taking the, the ball where it's pitched. And, uh, you know, you got to be patient and you got to be able to buy into that. And I mean, last night they did, and, and we've been working hard at that because we know most pitchers are going to try to stay from middle to outside. So that's something that we've been working on. And uh, like I said, our, our hit total was definitely uh, up from what, what it was last time. And then, uh, you know, Addison Cadell came in there and pitched an outstanding game. I know she wasn't feeling well. And uh, mm. she, uh, I believe, like you said, she had a no hitter going into the sixth. And uh, uh, I don't know how many strikeouts she had exactly, but I know, I know five. And she uh, definitely uh, stepped up because we, we really needed her to, to come through, and she did. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it was a game you needed. Uh, and I guess we keeps us tied is what happened to Mount Pleasant. There are a lot of things that happened last night. It was mm -hmm. like a full moon because there were things that I didn't expect to happen last night. But, uh, you know, that's why you play the game. Uh, yeah. Mount, uh, Texas High beat Mount Pleasant last night 2-1. to one. So, uh, you know, it, that's still going to be a big game for us coming up next Tuesday. Right. And then the, the real shocker to me, too, was uh, Lindell lost to Roy City 11-1 to one last wow. night. They, they uh, got run ruled. So, uh, again, that's why you play the game, and you got to be on your A game, and I say it every time we talk over here. But uh, those were two things that really kind of, you know, shocked me, but, but it kind of woke you up, too, thinking you, we cannot let that happen to us. Absolutely. So, And I think it woke our kids up, too, because now they know we have three games left, 
and we better have a sense of urgency in all of them. And you, you just can't take anyone for granted. And uh, uh, you got to play every game like it's your last. And, you know, I was talking to him yesterday. Really, we only have a little bit more than a week left, eight days, because uh, we're playing on Thursday next week because of the Good Friday thing. So uh, it's uh, – it's coming fast and furious, and uh, you know you better be on your A game because uh, all those spots right now. I mean, we've clinched, but of course you want to get one if you can. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know you don't want to drop down to three or four. So we still have to keep playing, and we still have to stay focused. And uh, everybody's playing for seating, uh, pretty much on the la on the top four. So uh, you know we we got to get after it. In the driver's seat, you want to keep driving and steering. Right? Yes, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's going to be a, you know, it feels good to know that we control our own destiny, but we also realize, you know, how big these upcoming games are to be able to have that opportunity to control our own destiny. So, you know, that being said, uh, you know, our girls are excited. I could tell they were excited last night, and uh, we, we just got to keep going. And, you know, I, I think our attitudes have been, you know, it, it sometimes happens like that, but that Mount Pleasant game was a wake-up call for us. Uh, I think they've responded well. Practices have been a lot better. And, uh, you know, they realize we got to put some work in. And, uh, you know, as much time as we go out in the field, they, they're out there focused right now and trying to get better and get after it and trying to accomplish what we're trying to do in practice. And, you know, that's all you can ask because it, it's getting late and the grind is starting to hit. Uh, but uh, right now I told them you cannot get tired of practicing because that, that's when you get tired of practicing, that's when you start getting beat. And so far our girls have been really upbeat since the Mount Pleasant game. I think they feel like they didn't play their best game and, uh you know, they want to show everybody that, hey, you know, we, we are better than what we showed that night. So, again, I, my hat's off to them because they are getting after it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to overlook Lindale and we're going to have to play the next three and we're going to get after it. The Lady Cats are now 6-1 and one in district play and 20-5 and five for the season. And they'll play Lindale Friday evening at Lady Cat Park. Well, you talk about a great start. The North Hopkins Panthers scored 15 runs in the bottom of the first to lead the Miller Grove Hornets 15 to nothing after one inning on their way to a 19 to nothing win on Tuesday. The Panthers added three runs in the second and one more run in the third. The Panthers had 15 hits. Meanwhile, Panthers pitchers Caleb Wyatt and Wyatt Wharton combined to throw a one-hit shutout in the game that only went three and a half innings. Wyatt got the pitching win, allowing no hits or runs over two innings with five strikeouts and no walks. And Wharton also pitched two innings, allowing one hit and no runs with five strikeouts and no walks. Jagger Qualis got the uh, Hornets hit. That was a single in the fourth inning. Qualis also took the pitching loss for Miller Grove. For the Panthers, Wyatt was two for four with a double, two runs scored, and two RBIs. Wharton was two for three with a double, three runs scored, and two RBIs. Victor Rojo was one for three with an RBI. Branson Thomas was two for two with two runs scored and two RBIs. Bryson Gillespie was two for two with two runs scored and two RBIs. Jeffrey Stewart was one for one with a triple, a run scored, and three RBIs. And Kevin Clement was one for two with two runs scored and an RBI. In a game that went back and forth, the uh, Saltillo Lady Lions softball team dropped a hard-fought game to Detroit 11-9 in Detroit on Tuesday. Detroit led 1-0 after two innings. Saltillo tied it up 1-1 in the third, but Detroit went up 5-1 in the bottom of the third. The Lady Lions scored three runs in the fourth and two more in the fifth to go up 6-5. Detroit had a four-run bottom of the fifth to go back ahead 9-6. Saltillo rallied again with three runs in the top of the sixth to tie the game 9-9. Detroit scored two in the bottom of the sixth to lead 11-9. to nine. And uh, when Saltillo did not score in the seventh inning, Detroit had that 11-9 to nine win. Chandler Bain got the pitching loss for Saltillo with seven strikeouts and seven walks. And for the Lady Lions, Bain was two for five with two triples. Josie Bench was two for three with two singles and two walks. 
Paisley Kastner was one for two with a double and two walks. Anna Reeder was one for three with a double and two walks. McKenna Gurley was two for four with two singles. Brittany Peoples was two for four with a double and two walks. The Lady Lions are now two and seven for the season. And Saltillo will play at Sulphur Bluff Thursday at 4.30 p.m. And that's Channel 18 TV News. I'm Don Julian. Thank you for joining me, and so long, everybody.